Mr. Dr. Chip Dodd is in the building. What is up? How are you doing? I hope you are doing well. I was just telling you right now, I mean, I literally, was, I've been running late. You know how it goes. I'm just, hey, it is what it is. It's good to see you. Good it's good. See, it's good to see you. Sitting here in the audience, waiting till you got here. <laughs> oh, is, that, is that it? I know. I know. I like. I was just like. I can't. I can't be inconsistent like this. It's not. This is not doing well or boding well for okay. for our people. It's okay. People do a lot. They they run hard. You're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. But it is. It is always a pleasure for us to to come, especially on Feelings Fridays. You can't let the people wait on Feelings Friday. Feelings Friday is the day. Yeah. If you came, we thought we was going to have to off for Thursday, but um, we, we decided to do Feelings Friday. I, I, I appreciate you um, turning turning up for us on today. Yeah, you bet. So, okay, yeah. So, I mean, ultimately what we've been doing, I mean, this week we still have been just walking around the things that divide us, you know, and we've just been answering questions, you know, over the last couple of weeks. I don't know if the people are getting tired of it, but – We've had some really good discussions. We had, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, D.A. Horton, but he is a pastor um, and, and professor actually in the in California at CBU. And so he was on with this and he was giving some really good nuggets to, to chew on. And I think that was on Tuesday of this week. So I thought that was a really good time. And then also um, we had, and, or he, or he wrote a book called Intentional. And then we have one of our residency uh, directors for the SIN Network. He came on, is a guy named James Hart. And he is going to be actually doing the residency and then leading our residencies in the future here at Blueprint Church. And he wrote a book called The Bible, um, The Bible, um, yeah, The Bible in Color. And, you know, we walked through some t- something with him, some time with him and just kind of working through his workbook. And, and that was really good. And that really started posing up just different questions because really we didn't get into the content of his book. But what we talked about was specifically the, you know, the, the, the setting up the scene because he spends a lot of time in that book just talking about like creating a safe space for us to be able to engage and to have real honest dialogue with one another. And so I was very grateful um, for the book. And I really just thought that this book, um, this week has been really helpful for us as a whole, you know? And so I'm, I'm excited. Let me see kind of who's all on. And then we'll, we'll um, let you, let, let, let the, the Dodd, Mr. Chip Dodd take it away. Uh, so I'm gonna, <laughs> pull up the screen so that we can we can see we can see the who who's all on today and so so far we got Jackie Taylor on and Derwin Anderson Christy Bryant what's up you guys uh hope that you you are doing well we are today it is Philly's Friday we are here with Dr. Chip Dodd he is the heart doctor as we are as we know him as voice the voice of the heart the fill it you know the needs of the heart keeping heart like of all the all the different books that we have, and so Bill, how are you doing? Me? Yeah, Chip. Uh, hey, yeah, doing well. <laughs> hey, to Jackie. I, it's like uh, she's steady. She's here. She's here every Friday. Yes. Hey. And and Corwin, Pastor Corwin is on. He says, "What's up, good oh, people?" He has something to say, doesn't he? Yeah, he has something to say. He's he he's interactive. He comes alive on Phyllis Friday. He comes alive when you are here. He wants you to to know that he loves you and he welcomes you. Yeah. Yeah, does he know who it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he knows. It, it's you. It is you live and in the flesh. So, yeah. you know, so like, yeah, I want to just continue on and just, you know, we don't have to talk specifically about any specific things, but just really how we approach, you know, when we talk yeah. about the things that divide or just our feelings as it relates to that specifically, you know, because I think it's really important for us, as we've been talking about, to be able to tell the truth about what's going on inside. Before we, if we are, or if we are to have empathy with anybody, we got to be able to know ourselves yes. and know the yes. roadmap of our own hearts. Yeah, hope so. Some people are talking really loud out here. Hold this one second. I want, I, I want to share. Okay. Something. All right. So yeah. So I mean, and so that's really the the big idea. And so. What I really want to do is I, I want this time to be interactive. I promise you guys, I am going to keep Chip in, you know, we're, we're going to answer as many questions. So you guys, but you guys got to interact with us and say, what other things you want to talk about? But go ahead, Chip. This, this is something that's just hit me recently. You know, and you guys can go look it up later, but Matthew 13, parable of the sower. And 
at the end of it, he says the, the seeds that fall on good soil produce a crop and therefore a harvest 160 or 30 times more than was sown, hmm. which means it's like a supernatural bounty. Yes. It's even beyond what the seed produces one. It's the seed produces thousands. And one of the things he says after he tells the parable, the disciples say, you know, how, how, what does it mean? And what is, what, how come you talk like that? Why don't you just make it simple? What does it mean? And he says, he uses a, a reference, and this is talking about trauma versus people healed from it, people calloused hearts versus sensitive hearts or awakened hearts. He says, it uses the book of Isaiah. He says, listen, for, for all those people who say they see, they don't really see. For all the people that say they really hear, they don't really hear. He said, you know, like, like sometimes my wife, Sonia, will say, hey, you're not listening to me. I'm going, yeah, I am. And I repeat what she says. He said, you heard what I said, but you're not listening. Mm. And it's like we can look at something but not really see it because see means to take it in, to take it into your heart, to really let it matter, right, mm. versus just watching. And so he says, because if you really saw and if you really listened, he said, you would understand with your hearts. And then he said, you would turn then and be healed. Mm. And it hit me that the good soil is, it produces a crop because people have understood, not with their brains, but they've understood with their hearts and they've gotten healed. And it's the healing that motivates people to go and bear fruit, to raise crops, to go do something about the problems but they're doing it out of out of actually as a witness. Mm. You know, they're doing it because they can't help it. Like when I wrote The Voice of the Heart, it's like, man, this stuff is real. This stuff matters. I understand with my heart. And this is done for me what, what I couldn't do for myself. And it's awakened me. And I have like I can see God and hear God and I can see people and hear people. And I can tell the truth about myself. I use my brain to express my heart versus using my brain to hide my heart. And it's people who, who, who have a story to tell of healing, of gaining their lives back, of I used to be bitter and now I, I'm capable of loving again. I used to be trapped in trauma, but now I can care again. I used to not be able to feel, but now I can feel again. I used to be prejudiced, but now I see people again. I used to be judgmental, but now I can give, I can give grain of, of discernment for, for the difference between this and that. And it's like, it's like if people awaken with their hearts, they understand with their hearts, the hottie, yeah. with their hearts, they can turn and be healed. It's the healing that brings the change. Because like, you know, when, when you found Jesus or Jesus found you, however you want to put it, like you, you got a burn inside you. And then, then that became a mission like, hey, I'm going to bring this to the places where they have to, I want to take this so people don't have to leave where they are to come get it. Yeah. No, it's you just, know, but that was out of your healing. Yeah. So people who don't have healing can't make change happen. Yeah. That's really good. And so, you know, when you talk about that healing, it's just really interesting because the healing that you're talking about, the healing of the heart is really oftentimes it's a healing of feeling more pain. You know, because the more that you are awakened to it, the more pain that you experience in it. Yeah. And so when yeah. you talk about that, you know, we can easily romanticize that 30, 100 fold return, you know, yeah. in the same way that like, you know, as we talk about even romanticizing following Jesus. But if we were to look at just following Jesus in the Bible and what following Jesus brought, it brought a lot of pain and, and ache and and anger and hunger and, you know, and, and thirst and all of those things that was that it wasn't this kind of romanticized understanding of that. And so when you're talking about this hundredfold return, that it's easy for us to romanticize that, but it's necessary for us if we're going to, you yes. know, yeah. to have the hundredfold return. The, 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 more, the more life matters and the more I love and the more I care, the more pain I have. Because right. I remember there was a time, you know, you know, we talked a lot about trauma and trauma, whether you like it or not, makes us reactive, but it also makes the heart hard. I mean, we, we, we can't attack. We get, we get hard hearted. 
not because we're bad, but because we're just frozen or scared because trauma freezes people, right? Yeah. Freezes the feelings. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I, I, there was a time like with Sonia, because of where I came from, I, I didn't, I didn't know how to care for her. And I didn't know how to, to, to be sensitive, really sensitive towards her. But as I got healing from, uh, for, from feelings, uh, like the idea of losing her would be like so devastating. It's like, yeah. it'd be like, like wanting to die. Yeah. That's, so, that's, so, yeah. Healing increases pain. No, that, that's, that's a good word. So what do you guys think about that? Like, Chip is telling us healing increases pain or it brings pain because you're willing or to, by order, by feeling, it reawakens you to the potential loss, you know, of things, to the potential pain of things. And so this is why we got to learn how to do sadness well. We got to learn how to do, how to do hurt well. We got to learn how to do shame well. We got to learn how to, how to allow our anger not to burn out or to suppress it. We got to learn these things if we're going to do life well. And we've been looking at, you know, and he, um, Chip brought up the verse in um, Matthew chapter 13, where he talked about the parable of the sower. So what are you, what are your thoughts on that? What get, like, let's talk, let's talk a little bit. I, I would love to hear like, do we, do we learn from the pain? Are we that angry? Are we angry enough to desire for what Chip is selling us, what Jesus is selling us, you know, or we want to continue to have a romanticized version of Christianity, it's specifically when it comes to things that, that divide us. Because, I mean, again, we've been talking about race, but we can talk about, as Chip has been talking about, we can talk about his relationship with Sonia or your relationship with your spouse, relationship with good friends, all of those things. You know, sound off, sound off. Keenan is on here. Um, Cindy, how are you doing? Jessica is on here. What's up, Jessica? Um, Michael, what is, what's up, man? Hope you guys are doing well. Cindy says this, for sure, you got to move into pain. As I've learned here in Feelings Fridays, Feel your feelings, says the hottie. Yeah, feel your feelings, feel your feelings. She says, I'm scared of that. I don't have a good perspective on pain. You know, and so, like, what does it mean to have a good perspective on pain, Chip? Yeah, you know what? So there's, let's, let's just call it today, let's call it love pain versus running pain. Okay. You know, trauma pain is about guarding doing everything I can to make sure I don't wind up having more pain. Okay. Okay. That's what trauma does. Mm -hmm. It's reactive. It's a, uh, it's defensive. It's a, uh, uh, isolating. It's uh, judgmental because trauma makes us look around and see an enemy everywhere we look. That's what trauma does. Somebody's mm -hmm. potential threat to hurt me more. Okay. Cause once you, once you're wounded, you start seeing through the eyes of wounds. Okay. Yeah. From yeah. love pain, love pain is the capacity to have the pain of compassion, the pain of forgiveness, the pain of struggling through whatever got to to return to reconcile. Yeah. Um, so what? Is, what? But what does it mean for us? Like, if we know that we are loving those and willing to have that pain for people that we know that is not going to love us back. You know, like yeah. like that type of pain. Like, where where do you put that type of pain? Well, you know what? I, I'm honestly that that we're we're made to be loved back. Mm -hmm. We're created to be loved back, and therefore we better have a group of people of healed healing hearts to be able to meet us where we are as we struggle to stay fully alive and bear fruit. Right? We yeah. got to have. Our, our communities and our groups of like-heartedness who can, who can deal in the world of grief and celebration, who can, who can, who can hear me say, Hey, I'm hurting today and I can be surrounded by care. And then somebody else can say they're hurting today and I can be part of surrounding them with care, mm -hmm. the care of prayer, the care of food, the care of understanding, the care of, relating the care of grasping the witness the care of them the things that communicate you're not alone yeah okay so, now when you go out into the, the world where that you know that, that 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 there is no love let's just say you go out to where there is no love that's ephesians 6 mm -hmm. it's like armor yeah like we don't change who we're made to be because the world is different 
but we have boundaries in that context. You know, we, 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 we offer possibility, but we don't throw, you know, pearls before pigs. I mean, you, so what would you, what would you say the difference would be between numbing out and putting boundaries and armor around those that you are to say, if I can say it this way, forced to be in relationship with. Yes. Yeah, like forced to be in relationship with is, is that we, we guard our hearts with all diligence, but we also see the possibility of changing another because anybody that's been healed means they were sick. Hmm. Okay, so you and I have been healed, yeah. healing, healing, not be, not forever healed because we have to struggle through life. But it means we've been sick, all right? And what was amazing was about St. Paul. I mean, a lot of people don't like Paul because they see him as like too harsh and, and, and uh, uh, rules. But this was a man who was a killer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul was a killer. So when, when he walked into the groups of people, he, he knew that there were killers in the room. But he also knew that there was a possibility that some of those killers, and I don't mean murderers, but killers could be people who could be awakened to healing. Yeah. So he would look around for the possibilities, you know, the starfish. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good, that's good. And at the same time, he was also watching for harm. Yeah. Because we're not called to run into harm. And so you, you, can't, you can't give love to people who are not looking for love. That's, oh, that's a I great mean, a, word. A person can only accept as much love as they're willing to take. And people who, are, who, have been, who, who don't have heart, who are traumatized, they, they, they reject love, Tahati. Yeah. So and, Corwin basically, you know, because we talk about this idea of rejecting love or even those who that are unwilling to fear or reject their feelings. Corwin asked the question, he says, is it healing from feelings or healing to feel? It's, it's, it's letting ourselves, healing means letting ourselves care again, letting ourselves feel again, and letting ourselves be cared about again. Okay. So once you lose heart, once trauma kicks in, you can't let anybody close because everything's about not letting what happened happen again. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Cindy basically says, but what I think happens is coping in bitterness sometimes seems like a better payoff than moving into yes. healing yes. and that's a lie yes that is so well said because if 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 i don't feel if i don't deal with my feelings my feelings are going to deal with me hmm. and what that means is if 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 i don't deal with feelings feelings are going to make me sick and i will have the strength of resentment mm -hmm. which is a defense i'll have the strength of apathy I'll have the strength of getting even, getting revenge. I'll have the strength of depressing, of not caring. I'll have the strength of anxiety, which is hypervigilance and control. I have the strength of rage. Hmm. And man, the rage feels great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really to good. to to uh, get even feels right. Yes, it does. And I, I, so many times I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm just like, ooh, and I'm just be thinking about little ways. Like, okay, how can I get them back? But at the same time, keep my maturity. But like, just make sure, like, that let them know. I know. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah. that is so, and it's so intoxicating, and yes. it feels so right. And, and I, I call it. I put that in the category of justified righteousness. Yes. You know, it's yes. it's it's what it's that Liam Neeson. I, you ever seen kind of those yes. Liam Neeson movies? It's like you took my yes. daughter, so I could go and kill a hundred people in yes. order to get my daughter back. It's just like, yes. and everybody's like, I would do the same thing. You know what? God is God. There are a couple of things I was thinking. One is I remember I spoke in front of all these psychiatrists and psychiatrists tend to not like people like me, but, you know, doing feelings and, you know, process. And they see themselves as the experts of everything. A lot of times, a lot of times. I don't mean all the time. I don't mean Sandy by any means, but. Look at you. Like, 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 what, what's, what do you feel right now? Yeah, what do you fear, feel right? fear and shame. Like, oh, oh, like, you know, like, like, Sandy, I don't mean you. Like, I've already apologized before I get there because she's going to get me from saying it, yeah. right? So I'm just protecting myself. Yeah, yeah. But I remember after I spoke, uh, one of these guys said, said something like, something real mean, man. It was like, just like, you know, I just, he, uh, vendors are people who come and try to sell drugs to the doctors. 
and they, they like bring lunch and they kiss, you know, kiss up and all that kind of stuff. And he said, well, it seems to me you're just a vendor. Like, in other words, you're just selling, you're just selling us. Like you, you don't, you're not really one of us. You're just selling us. And man, I thought I couldn't even, I was speechless because the only thing I could say was something that I, would be wrong to say we're going down an elevator. Yeah. And I wanted to just, you know, I wanted to just say, you know what I want to say, right? Yeah, yeah. No, and and that's, it, it, it would do no good. That it does. It doesn't. And But it feels good, or at least we think yeah. it feels good. Like you said, yeah. it, it's the power of control, the power yeah. of resentment, and, yes. and those things that are so... I want, to, I want to beat him in the floor. Yes. Honestly. No, I and exactly because I felt hurt, I felt fear, I felt shame, and and he was wrong. By the way, this guy was wrong. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted I wanted him to know what what he was doing, and I wanted to put it on him. And that and that and that comes out so much, especially when you talk about things that divide. You know, yeah, anything that, that divide us is just like yeah. it's so easy because we feel better about our argument, like in the art of kind of con- confrontation. It seems like we feel better about our argument if we can shame the other person's argument. Yes, you which know. means we're controlled by fear. Yeah, we're actually good. being controlled by fear. But God has been very clear. You know, one of the, you know, the Hadi, the idea of not wanting revenge is also not godly. Right. I mean, one of the holy characteristics of God is justice, and one of the holy characteristics of justice is is revenge. Yeah. And which is means getting things right. But see, it doesn't mean that God did when we're image bearers of God, we're, we're, we're created to wish for revenge, for wish for justice. Mm -hmm. But he says that, that revenge is mine, not yours. And he's very clear. uh, And you could, you could straighten this out once if I mess Mm -hmm. it up, but he's very clear. He said, get out of the way. Don't take revenge in your hands get out of the way because anybody that harms one of my children, uh, you don't want to see what I'm going to do. You don't want to see it, which almost makes us go, well, wait a minute, God, wait, 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 but I don't mean that much. Yeah. You know, because what he is going to do for his love for us and those, those who harm us and do not come to healing, the, the result is going to be horrific. Yeah. That's, that's a good word. Is That's it? a good word. Yeah, no, I mean, it really is. I mean, it, it is, is that, is this really, what do we do with that revenge or that, that desire for revenge? And I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great word. Well, Alexis get free, Cooper. Get freedom from it. Get freedom from it. Amen. Amen. Alexis Coots, all the way from Cali, says D.A. Intentional, his book, the guy that I brought on, D.A. Horton brought on, Intentional Book gives an analogy of cleaning an an infection that was helpful to think about healing, that actually cleaning out those infection, it really, it's really painful, but it's necessary. And so he asks, is like, how do you continue to pursue church members well who might want to run from the pain while you are okay to tackle it? So is this you know what? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know, I've I've seen that um, there are there are people who lead, and there are people who participate with leaders, and then there are people who are just simply follow. Yeah. And all they're all we need we all need each other. You know, one body, many parts. But like, if you're going to lead, go ahead and lead. And and a lot of people aren't necessarily called to go where you're going. And then there are some people who are saying, hey, how can I help you, even though I don't want to lead it? And there's some people just going to go with you, followers. And then there are some people that aren't called to it. So, you know, give, don't let your leadership depend on everybody else's agreement yeah. or yeah. everybody else's applause. Yeah, that's good. I think that's a great word. I mean, you still got to go. And that's where, the, I mean, the passion, you got to live as God has created you. Kristen says this. Um, learning to lean into our feelings as a Christian truly requires us to depend on the spirit for those fruit like self-control, meekness, gentleness, etc. I see how feeling, how dealing with my feelings about racism in America is making me more like Jesus because, um, I'm sorry, uh, because I'm learning, I'm leaning into him in dealing with it rather than just possessing processing my feelings the same way people without e- eternal hope. So yes, fear your feelings, but lean into Jesus as you feel them, trusting that he wants to speak into them. Yeah, I think that's a great word because I've, we're not, 
like this is not a an either or, right? This is not a all right if you feel your feelings. And I think a lot of times, you know, Christians, especially Bible believing Christians, are afraid that man, this is kind of this this human stuff. This you know, kind of like oh man, you bring this humanistic this stuff into the church. Yeah, we are not at any. We're teaching like how to truly be human and how to take your humanity to God. And I think yes, that that is yes. good. That's so well said, Jahadi. Like this is so not uh, new age humanism. This is finally us returning to not being God, but being in need of God. And our this is the anthropology. This is how God made human beings. Starting with, he created us mainly to be creatures who are created for relationship, which is an emotional and spiritual thing. It's not a, it's not a reason, cognitive thing. And so it's like literally the, the language of the heart is what, what God hung, hungers, wants to hear from us so he can do for us and join us. Only the bleeding woman in Mark got healed. She was the only one speaking neediness, speaking feelings. And he said, I felt my power come out of me. Hmm. And, and, and he said, somebody touched me. Wow. And the, all the people said, well, everybody's touched me, you know, but somebody really touched me. She touched Jesus with her heart. She touched her with her knee, you know, yes, her, with her knee. Yeah, same way with Luke seven, the sinful woman, same way with the centurion, same way with the blind man, same way and over and over again. So this is us bringing how God made us to the God who created us. And that's why I, in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, it, he begins, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? We need to yeah. change the way we see Christ. We need to tell the truth about what's going on inside, bring all of us and stop having self-reliance, self-dependence. And this is immediately after the 40 days of wandering in the wilderness, you know, of the three temptations, the constant, you know, temptation that Jesus was pressing. He says, I do not live off of bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I am completely and I'm wholly dependent upon the Father. He's telling the truth about what's going on inside and he's taking it. And in that process, he's allowing himself to, to experience more of the person and work of, of the Father in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so, yeah, Kristen, I think that's a great, great that word. Right. That's a great word yes. that, that you're saying. She, she says this, she says, Jesus offers something better than, than getting even, but we need his help, his spirit, not to lean yes. that way. The whole Amen. book of John is telling Amen. us that. Yeah. Yeah, Dahadi, you know, uh, something so beautiful, when, when we start thinking, when we start looking around the world, and let's just say, let's say the word evil, evil's big, and it's everywhere, yeah. right? Racism's big, and it's everywhere. Uh, uh, stealing, uh, dishonesty uh, is big and everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and the thing is, if, if we just start being furious about big racism which is right on big uh evil which is right on it, it will it will overwhelm us and so the thing is it will take us away from what we can actually do and and the, what we can actually do is love and and care and deal with and be kind to express the 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 fruit of the spirit with the people we're with. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like grocery stores. Say, hey, you know, it's like. It's just really hard, Chip. Like, you know, specifically when, you know, because you, you kind of hear the idea of be patient, you know, try hard, you know, like those things. You know, it's sort of like if you were to imagine that someone was like intentionally oppressing Sonia, you know, or one of your children, and they were intentionally oppressing, that that is going to stir up some things and if you feel like there's a system that is consistently oppressing them that there's a there's an anchor there's a there's a you know a desire to, to make it right and to do something about it and then and so it's really hard for kind of when we talk about you know these types of things so i i mean i get it as one who has that is experiencing this and where we see the the things that trigger like the you know the aubrey murder like the breaking into like like all the many many things that are taking place yes so it's like when this is happening to you specifically like it is this it's really hard yes and and so individually like so i'm saying it's not about ignoring the big 
but not letting the big take away from the what we can do together. See, the big will defeat us. We'll finally have to just give up or blow up. But if if individually we come together and share the struggle, like if like Sonia is being oppressed, it's like well, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah. I'm gonna go crazy. I mean, just like uh, uh, kill, steal, and destroy. I mean, just you know, Liam Nick Neeson, right? Yep. So, like blowing crap up. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> like, we're gonna do it now. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So I mean, that is like you said. I mean, just. If that were to take place and if you see and if you're pointing to things that you are saying like man this is clearly happening because she's just simply my wife or this is just happening yes. simply because she's a woman or yes. this is happening and this is directly affecting someone who i am loving yes. and it's directly affecting me like you said like that's when we naturally our mind naturally goes into liam neeson mode yes. you know yes. in that way and that's not that's not wrong Right. The energy of that isn't wrong because the desire for revenge, righteousness, and justice is a absolute we're created for it. But he so clearly said, whoa, 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 whoa. You you will get even and then you won't be feeling it anymore, but then also nothing changes. That's good. And that's why nothing I love changes. and I love um Brian Loritz came out, you know, he was just talking about man, things like this, things like the Amal Arbery in those situations. They make you anger. There's a righteous anger. But he, then he warns him, he says, just don't strike the rock. Yes. And he's referring to the Moses you know, incident is that after you know, leading millions of people out of slavery and bringing them up and they keep on it, constantly grumbling, constantly complaining, constantly over and over again that you know, he's, and then God tells him, hey, speak to the rock. And Moses is like, all right, I'm going to speak to the rock, but I'm going to do a little more because I need them to know that I'm upset yeah. with, yeah, with like, them. Like, oh, look who's doing the talking now. Yeah, yeah. Like so, <laughs> so he tells us, don't, don't. But the hottie, like that, that. Oh, you said it so, so well. Um, shoot, I, I forgot. Yeah. But, oh, that. Oh, I, I would get in, but see, then I, I would, see if 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 I face that I'm not Liam Neeson, and I'm not, you know, the these superhero guys that just, I mean get even like i can't yeah. i can't i i can't right. you can't yeah. and so this this revenge is actually uh righteous and at the same time we can't do it god says stop whoa uh, let's go another direction let us let us go towards passion let us go towards uh, uh movement and so let your revenge turn to grief that's good because see, I, I couldn't stop what happened to Sonya. I couldn't stop. I wasn't there to stop what happened to my sons. I, I couldn't take away William's uh, spinal tumor. I couldn't stop what these coaches did or whatever it happens to be. I can either get revenge or I can get grief. Yeah, I can get it. revenge or get grief. And grief takes us towards joining with each other. It takes us not to defeat, but takes us to the tears of the world we live in. That's good. And and then that takes us to each other, and then we look at each other, saying, "Okay, these tears are going to bring me to action." That's good. So, what are we together going to do? And that action that brings reconciliation. That's good. We got a couple more minutes. Let's go and just see what else anybody is saying. Actually, Lecrae is on. What's up, Lecrae? How are you doing? Hey, Lecrae. Hope all is well. Loren, what's up, Loren? How are you doing? It's good to see you again, um, Cindy says wanting revenge is being our own god amen cindy i think that that is a great word she um she, she talks about just that idea my wife has joined in the midnight hour she joined at the <laughs> end so what's up loretta how are you doing i hope this is good hopefully guys this is helpful for you Kristen, you Kristen says this i think you will love it oh this is they're they're talking back and forth they're talking about john she was quoting john and how that truly highlights the most beautiful attributes of Christ, you know, and, you know, and this may they just said, let your revenge turn to grief, you know, and I think that that is, is critical for us is that because there's so much that, that, that comes out of Yeah, and that grief idea is not the end. It's not like give up grief. I don't mean grief as in give up. I mean, grief as in this is a tragic place where we live. This place is wrong. This place is, is, uh, is dark, Dahadi. 
And it's like, but, but light is the heart being expressed with each other, caring for each other, and we're stronger together. Yeah. I mean, I saw this clip where these 20 hyenas were surrounding this one lion and he would fight them off as much as he could, but they were, they were getting on him. And another lion comes up, goes into the 20 and those two lions walk off together and they literally are rubbing manes. They're like doing like, like they're like hugging each other yeah. saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he was trapped and in grief. There was no power to do anything about what was attacking him. And he got a rescue. And so our grief needs to turn towards us coming together, saying, this is not how we want to live. We want to live a different way. Let's do something about the, the darkness and bring light. Let's do something about the hopelessness and bring hope. But yeah. that's not weakness, it's strength. It is strength. And, you know, one of the From things that... From to legislation to neighbor treat everything. Yeah. And one of the things that like one of our pastors, Pastor John, who's now pastoring at Cornerstone, used to always say that the goal of the Christian is not a fight for perfection, but it's a fight against isolation. You know, and what and what I remember about oh, your your feelings chart earlier when we when I first was learning the voice of the heart, the feelings chart, you used to always teach it in a way where you would go through the feelings and then you would go through the get you know, the gifts would lead to relationship. But then yeah, you would go well, through, then you would go through, and then you would talk about the the impairments that leads to isolation. You don't do that anymore. I, I'm requesting that you bring that back. That you do, that whenever you come, that you just talk about how again that that's the goal. That remember that sin is the very thing that isolates us from God. It separates us from one another. It separates us from God, and it brings about isolation. And the goal of us is to fight for relationship because when we talk about the things that divide, that's the very impact that that sin has in the very nature of the antichrist and this is why when jesus says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation of bringing us back together and if that is the ministry of reconciliation then it is the the opposition of the antichrist to bring about division and that's why we have to understand that anything that divides brings about is is bringing about ice that brings about isolation is not of god yeah, and hyenas, hyenas will not attack a herd. In other words, I, they, won't, they won't attack unless they're isolated, they won't attack. Yes. And so, yes. And I think that that's, that's important. So that's my request. That's my one request to you today, Chip, is, is that you would, like, when you bring that back out, is this because I think it's so beautiful for us to tie that in because Christians, we all recognize and we all say that Christianity is not a religion, but it's about relationships. It's about relationship. And that this helps us to put tangible handlebars on of how these feelings, if, if done, you know, if, if willing to surrender to them and give them and bring them to God, that they can take us into authentic and genuine relationship with God, with ourselves, with other believers, with our time, our talent, our treasures. It can give us, it, can, it allows us to embrace the shame of life. And then, yes. uh, and then when we are able to embrace our humanity, then we can have a proper and authentic and genuine relationship with our maker. Amen, preach it. And I held my cup out while you were talking and you were feeling it. That way, as soon as you hang up, I'm going to drink it. You're going to drink it. <laughs> no, I'm serious, Dahadi. Those, those are words. Those are truth. Because like, like isolation separates us from the lives we're made to have, separates us from each other because, we're, we're, you know, like people who are apathetic, who run from loneliness, they become completely uncaring, calloused. Uh, they become removed, they become isolated, they become alone, and alone kills. I mean, you can't be with somebody who's fighting to be alone. Yeah, that's good. And you run from feelings, you're fighting to be alone. You're if fighting you're to be alone. Feelings, you're fighting to that's be alone. good. That's the tweetable moment, you guys. If you're running from feelings, you are fighting to be alone. Well, Dr. Chip Dodd, author of The Voice of the Heart, The Needs of the Heart, Keeping Heart, The Heart Doctor. <laughs> we appreciate you for coming on again, once again, on Feelings Friday. There were so many comments, so many different things. Angie asking about wanting revenge to bring your own good, for, to be your own God versus allowing God to take your revenge. Cindy's on here engaging. I really do just appreciate you guys and appreciate you guys engaging with me and, and Chip. You guys are the reason why we, we come together. And, I, and again, I really appreciate you, Chip, is just recognizing that 
you know, allowing us to return to how God has made us and being able to say, like, it is okay to have the desire of revenge. It's just not for us to exact that revenge. Yes. That is and, a godly and, and thing. We, 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 it doesn't mean that that revenge can't turn to the, the energy of seeking justice after the grief. Yeah. After the grief. Yeah. That's good. Hey, appreciate you, Dahadi. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. We love you. Until next time, the end, the wrap of another Feelings Friday with Dr. Chip Dodd. Appreciate you. You upbeat. You upbeat.